Hey folks, this is Shock. We're going to do a video on how to ride a motorcycle, but also this is an update on Nephilim Free. He wanted me to let all of you know that uh, he sends his love and that he um, his computer crashed. So uh, let me talk to you about him first and let's put this camera in the helmet real quick. And then I'm going to show you how to ride a motorcycle also. We'll give you a little bonus video. Hold on. I put my gloves on. Um, I talked to Nephilim Free last night on the phone, and um, his computer crashed. So he's got a very good friend of his, uh, Micah, that will be checking in with his YouTube channel. He gave Micah the key to get in, the password and everything. So Micah will be checking in with it. And um, so I talked to Neff last night, and he said to let all of you know that... Um, if he's not getting back with you, that's what it is, his computer crashed. So we, he's got to get a new computer or fix the one he has. Okay? So, I thought I'd let you know that. Let's add a little bonus to this video, and let's talk about how to ride a motorcycle. Here's how you start it. Pull the clutch in. Here's the starter right here where my thumb's at. See that light right there that says neutral? That's the neutral light. Um, that says in, that's the neutral light. What I'm going to do is I pull this lever in, that's the clutch like on a car, and then when I do that, let me show you something, I'm going to kick down here to first gear, and then after I'm in first, I'm going to kick up to second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, like that. Got, got it, guys? This is the rear brake, this is the front brake, this is the throttle here, so let's go. Yeah, so I was talking to Neff. And um, he said that his computer crashed. You don't know if it's the motherboard or something like that. So I'll let all you guys know about that. I'm going to pull the clutch lever in. I'm going to kick down with my foot. And you, here's what you do. If you're new to a motorcycle, pull the clutch lever in first. Kick down. Notice the neutral light is out. I am still have the clutch lever in, see? You're going to slowly release it while giving it a little bit of throttle and balance. Now when you're coming up to a stop where you got to go out on the road, pull the clutch lever in. And um, keep the brake on. See how I got both of my feet down? I'm holding the front brake and keep the clutch lever in. You don't want to fly out into traffic. Give it a lot of throttle now. Watch this. Clutch in, kick up. I'm in second. This light always catches me, so let's see. Clutch in, kick up, I'm in third. Let's see if this light catches me. No, not this time, my buckaroos. So I'm in third. See that? Now, you could also clutch in and kick down to second. See how I just did that? Hey, Neff, I hope you don't mind me. Clutch in, kick down to neutral. I hope you don't mind me mixing in this motorcycle video uh, as an added bonus for the viewers. I'm sure he doesn't. Neff's a motorcycle rider too. He talked about when he used to ride certain motorcycles. Okay, I'm in first. Now, we're getting on the freeway. Clutch in, kick up, I'm in second. Now, clutch in, kick up third. You let it wind out more on the tachometer. You don't want the tack to go into the red because you could damage your motor. Clutch in, kick up. Okay. Now we're going to give it a lot more throttle. Still haven't shifted, see that? Watch this. I'm at 6,000 RPM. 7,000. Clutch in. And clutch in. I'm in sixth gear. See that? All the way up to six. Get over here. And then you just kind of settle in. It's awesome. I highly recommend all of you, if you're Christians, to get a motorcycle. Now, um, the chances of you dying are extremely high on a motorcycle compared to a car. Extremely dying, being maimed for life getting injured 
So I don't feel comfortable telling people that are not Christians to get a motorcycle until they get their priorities in order. You want to be a Christian if you're going to be riding a motorcycle. Because you're always one breath away from death on a motorcycle. And I want you to enjoy it. You're not going to enjoy riding a motorcycle knowing that you're one breath away from death and here you're not saved. So you want to be saved. I'm going to tell you the gospel in a little a little mini gospel uh, message. And there's another guy on a motorcycle over here. I think he's on a Harley though. Basically, the Christian message is this. <clears throat> that all of us because sin has entered into the world through Adam and Eve and we've all sinned but all of us have fallen short that's a nice motorcycle of the glory of God we've all fallen short of God's standard which is absolute perfection have you guys lied before have we got angry before I have have we um, have you stolen before have you lusted before you know the you know the words well if we've done any of these things we were fallen short of God's standard which is absolute perfection now there's only one person in history that hasn't done those things Jesus Christ he lived a perfect sinless life you know I was just thinking this video's got it all it's got motorcycle riding we're talking about Nephilim free and now you even get a mini gospel message I mean what more do you folks want I mean this this is a smorgasbord of entertainment coming up to a Corvette here so basically um, if you go to John 3:16 you'll see words like this for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life and you know what Jesus said Jesus said those that believe in him are not condemned but those that do not believe are condemned already well wait a minute why would they be condemned already remember what I told you about the standard I, as a sinner, saved by grace, I fall short of God's standard. Well, when Jesus died on the cross and he was resurrected, when he died on the cross, when he was resurrected, he took your punishment. He took my punishments for our sin. He, he was judged. You know, it's interesting if you read the Bible when Jesus died Jesus cries out on the cross my God my God why have you forsaken me and it was at this moment where God turned his back on Jesus Christ as your sins and my sins were buffeted upon him all the sins of the world were buffeted upon him and because God must judge sin you can't have anything to do with sin he's so holy he turns his back on Jesus Christ in that moment but Jesus never sinned. He was our ultimate sacrifice. And then God raised up Jesus Christ again supernaturally as an ex-atheist, now Christian. I really believe this guy. We have the empty tomb proof and evidence. We have the disciples that basically all, you know, powered and betrayed Jesus when he was alive going to the cross. But afterwards, after Jesus was crucified, they said that they saw him and all of a sudden for some unknown reason well I know the reason they saw Jesus Christ they become bold and they even die for Jesus Christ after he's supposedly dead but the disciples said he wasn't dead they said they saw him again and they they even died for Jesus Christ what was their motive this is one thing as an atheist I could not figure out any rational reason unless Jesus rose from the dead what was their motive to die for Jesus Christ saying that he rose from the dead 
you see, when the atheist regimes of Stalin, Pol Pot, Mao, and they kill a bunch of people and they're willing to die in war, they're not really dying for Jesus Christ, for the teachings of Jesus, they're just dying because they're evil. When the um, Islamic terrorists uh, kill people in the Twin Towers, they're not really dying for Jesus Christ at all. It has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. They're just dying and killing people because they're evil. But the disciples, they didn't harm anybody. The Christians didn't harm anybody. And they died for the, the fact that Jesus Christ rose again. So, when you die and when I die, I have no doubt, I have no doubt we will stand before God and we will answer about things we've done. Now, if you're in Jesus Christ, you see how I'm looking through this helmet and I'm looking through the visor? Imagine that this visor is the perfected work of Jesus Christ, okay? This is a basic analogy, but take it for what it's worth. Hold on, i got to get in front of this truck. So when God looks at you, He looks at you through the visor, if you will, if you will allow me to use that analogy, of Jesus Christ, and He sees you perfected. Not because of what you and I have done, but because of what He has done. He sees you through the eyeglasses, the spectacles, if you will, the visor of Jesus Christ, and he sees you perfected. You will not be judged for your sins because you already were judged on the cross when Jesus Christ died. You know, it's interesting, too, if you actually read, you guys should go read the book of Mark and the Bible. If you actually read Mark and you read about the crucifixion narratives, that Jesus was uh, crucified by two men. And each one of us, in a way, represents one of those two men. One of the men hurled insults at Jesus Christ and mocked Jesus Christ. The other man stood up for Jesus Christ. And he's, he, you actually see on the cross that he tells the first guy to be quiet, the one uh, thief on the cross, tells the other one, the one mocking Jesus, to be quiet. And then he admits that he's a sinner right there on the cross. And he tells Jesus, picture this, they're dying, they're in pain, the most severe pain ever. And he turns to Jesus Christ and he says, Lord, remember me when you go into your kingdom. And Jesus says, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now, if you look at the, the amount of words that Jesus said to the man that was honest and the man that admitted he was a sinner, Jesus shares some kind words with that man. But the other guy, it's interesting that Jesus is silent. He doesn't speak to that man. That's interesting to me. So each one of us is that man, one of those men on the cross. Which one do you think you are? If you had to say, are you the man hurling insults at Jesus, the one rejecting Jesus Christ? Are you that one? I hope not. I hope you're the one that said, hey, you know what? Told the other guy to be quiet and he stood up for Jesus Christ and he said, Lord, remember me when you go into your kingdom. Anyways, folks, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, Neps computer crash that's nephilim free on youtube talked to him last night you don't know if it's the motherboard or the power supply or whatever you tried a different power supply that didn't work so remember folks sooner or later we will come to jesus christ i have faith in that you know why like dr martin luther king said no matter how hard people try to get rid of the message of Jesus Christ, even when truth is crushed to the ground, it will rise again. And no lie, no lie can live forever.
Go to my website below at shockonnow.net. Click free stuff and get yourself a bunch of free stuff there. God bless you guys. I love you.